Okay, welcome. This is the intention tapping to release anxiety, find calm and create clarity. Although that's really a bit of a misnomer because clarity is something that you get from the process. And so you create it by doing the process. Anyway, create clarity. It's a, um, what do you call it? When you have a, anyway, they both start with C, so it works better. Quickly, the aims of this presentation is to give you some of the basics of intention tapping for those of you who are brand new and to review for those of you who know a little bit about it or you haven't actually seen it. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it by uh, taking you through some steps and showing you how I would do it, talking about how to use it, and also doing a demo with at least one volunteer in the time that we have. And we'd be going for uh, about 75 minutes, about an hour and 15 minutes and uh, we'll do as much as we can in the time that we have to help you to get to understand this fantastic approach which i'm now calling intention tapping and how you can use it to release your own stress and your own anxiety and my aim is for you to be able to learn this so that you can become free to basically have a better life and uh, calmness and clarity is something that that happens out of the process it's just something that tends to arise and uh, you also get in touch with your resources and you also, um, yeah, you tend to enjoy life more, you become lighter. I was just working with a client this morning and she just said, I just feel light in my whole body and my whole energy system. That's what I'm after. Just very quickly, uh, disclaimers to get this out of the way, uh, simple energy techniques, which is the tapping approach that we use within intention tapping. And the process I call intention tapping, which I have also called intention-based energy process or IEP or YEP, are still considered largely experimental in the scientific paradigm, even though there's a pretty good evidence base for uh, acupoint tapping, the ways that I'm using these techniques are still considered largely experimental. Therefore, you must take full responsibility if you decide to use them and for your own mental and physical health. And if you are dealing with severe or long-standing mental or physical health problems, you should check with your uh, physician and or therapist before using these techniques and seek treatment from them, of course. Just also because we're doing tapping and we're using tapping within a COVID environment, um, if you are in, if you're not in your home and you haven't washed your hands and you have, uh, are not in a, an area which is disinfected, wash your hands thoroughly before tapping your face. Uh, tapping itself is not going to replace proper medical care. And if you are not feeling well, follow your local health guidelines. I've been doing tapping for a long time now, and I've seen many, many people think that they can do everything with tapping. And Gary Craig, who created the most popular form of tapping called EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques, he said, try it on everything. But even he didn't say that it would work on everything. So this is quick review because I need to go through the basics for those of you who are brand new to tapping. And I'm gonna try and do this as quickly as possible so we can get into the meaty bit, which is the practical stuff. A lot of this stuff, you can find the information online at our websites, eftdownunder.com and, and now on intentiontapping.com. So the points we use in tapping originally, uh, were explained in acupressure and acupuncture. They're the same points. They're accessible points on the upper body and the hands. And uh, basically the, the biggest discovery in the, in the tapping world uh, or the world which we now know of as tapping or energy psychology was Roger Callahan who made the discovery that stimulating these points uh, while you're focusing on a problem can produce dramatic shifts. And he then explored that after having a client who had a really big shift on her uh, water phobia, <clears throat> developed an approach he calls thought field therapy. Gary Craig came along and simplified that. Uh, he developed the most well-known popular form of tapping called emotional freedom techniques, EFT, which I learned together with my friend, Dr. David Lake back in 1997. And uh, then he and I, developed a simplification of that we call simple energy techniques. And I have in integrated that simple tapping approach into this process of intention tapping. So there's my good mate, Dr. David Lake. Um, this is actually him towards the end of his uh, teaching and presenting career because David actually started out with me going over and learning EFT from Gary Craig 
got up on stage for his lifelong public speaking phobia, was essentially cured of that um, speaking phobia in a single 38 minute treatment with Gary. And then uh, after that, I invited him to join me in teaching and presenting workshops. And uh, we went on the road teaching people our expertise, his, his expertise in trauma and uh, relationships and uh, my expertise mainly at that time in, uh, in peak performance and getting people to overcome blocks to achieve their goals. And uh, we had a good 18, 20 years traveling around the world together, teaching people, as I said, EFT originally, then advanced EFT, and then um, our own integrated approaches, simple energy techniques, and uh, another approach called provocative energy techniques and advanced integrative approach. And uh, David is now retired. I therefore get to take the credit for all the things that we that, that he developed in SET and PET. Um, and uh, yeah, I miss him a lot. <laughs> but hey, we couldn't travel on the road together now anyway, because, uh, because of the COVID situation. For those of you who are brand new to tapping, there is a lot of research on it. Many people are absolutely gobsmacked at the amount of studies that have been done. Um, over 200 people have studied this in 12 different countries. There are um, now more than 65 randomized control trials. This is as of, um, oh gosh, I think it was mid last year that, um, that ASEP, the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology, they, uh, they do a quick summary of all the research. Um, and uh, yeah, the gold standard in, in research is randomized controlled trials. And there's probably been 70 or more now. Um, the results have been published in some very prestigious peer reviewed journals. Um, there have also been enough studies to, cre to create several meta analyses, which are studies of all the studies to look at the, the size of the effects. And uh, you know, in three meta-analyses, the effect size for tapping was very large. And in a fourth meta-analysis, the, the um, oh, excuse me, <laughs> my alarm is going off an hour early. <laughs> so apart from giving you the wrong day and the wrong date, I also set the, uh, the stopping time for the wrong time. So anyway, we're still here, so let's keep going. For those of you who want to follow this up, David Feinstein has done some of the most brilliant and uh, comprehensive and profound and useful reviews of tapping. In 2012, in the review of general psychology, he reviewed 51 peer reviewed studies, 18 of which were randomized controlled trials. And at that time he found that tapping had met the American Psychological Association's criteria as evidence-based for phobias, test anxiety, PTSD, depression, Public and public speaking anxiety. And the best thing about that particular review, it was published in the American Psychological Association's own journal. So this is a very prestigious journal. And then in 2008, he did a more recent updated review, um, which includes some stuff for those of you who are interested to know about how tapping works and all that kind of stuff. Um, and at that time, there'd been 100 peer reviewed studies done. 51 of them that he reviewed uh, critically were randomized controlled trials. And uh, as he stated, the, these protocols are rapid and effective in producing beneficial outcomes in treating anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and possibly a bunch of other conditions. Um, more recent research that's really interesting is some fMRI studies documenting neural changes. So you can actually see, for example, um, before tapping, um, areas of the midbrain lit up, and then after tapping, uh, when people are shown, in this case, their craved food um, in, in Peter Stapleton and her colleagues did the, this research. She's done a lot, of, uh, a lot of research generally, but also a lot of, of research in the area of dealing with emotional eating and uh, food cravings. And they're able to demonstrate uh, changes in activity in the brain before and after using EFT, which is really quite profound and, and uh, yeah, just validating what those of us who've been using tapping have, uh, have seen and experienced. Just um, in terms of the points that we use, the points used in EFT and in SET and in IEP are the same. 
except for the fact that now most people who use EFT are just using the, the, the points on the upper body, um, which is on the left hand side, and, uh, and they're also using the side of the hand spot. And they don't tend to use any more the points on the hand, which is what was included in the original longer version of EFT. Now we use all of those points in SET, which might make SET sound a little bit like it's more complicated, but actually it isn't. And as you'll see, there are a number of things about uh, SET that make it uh, much simpler and more efficient than EFT. In terms of uh, efficacy, the results are identical and you know, and certainly in all the, um, uh, the clinical situations that we've seen, and also in terms of the research that we have, uh, we have done, uh, you know, the results are identical. Okay, so very, very quickly, the, the basics of using SET are that you can tap on any of those points on either side of the body. You can focus on whatever you're aware of, whether it be thoughts, whether it be feelings, whether it be body sensations, whether it be emotions, just focus on whatever it is. And then you can tap on these acupressure points on the body while that's happening. And you can follow that in a focused way where you address issues and, and all the different aspects of issues. And you can also tap indirectly where you just get a benefit just from doing the tapping. We like to use an approach which integrates mindfulness and acceptance. So we call this mindful acceptance tapping where you notice whatever's going on, you accept it and allow it to do whatever it does. Um, you add tapping to it and you basically follow what happens without trying to make anything happen. You might hear about people saying, tap it away or tap your emotions away. We're not into that at all. And, uh, you know, I keep saying we, because I, you know, I still think of David as with me. He certainly is in spirit, but he's, um, you know, he's living on the Northern beaches of Sydney and pretty much retired now, apart from doing a little bit of supervision with people. Um, but uh, certainly a large part of him is in this process because he, ex he discovered the, um, you know, the process we use, which, which is a more continual tapping. We just get people tapping on these points continually. We find the more tapping you do in general, the better results that you get. And we also discovered that if you tap every day, that this process occurs and we call it energy toning, where your general stress and anxiety comes down and your good life energy and confidence goes up. So it's for those of you who do know a bit about EFT, some, some of the key differences. Uh, in EFT, when they, um, when they are working on problems, they describe the problem in words in a setup statement. And they also use a, a self-accepting statement within that setup statement. And then when they tap on the points, they also use reminder statements where they they keep repeating a statement which focuses you in on the issue. We don't do that. We just let you focus on your problem in your own way and follow whatever's happening and whatever you are noticing in terms of the shifts between thoughts and feelings, uh, between uh, feelings in terms of where they're located or, or their severity and nature and all of those kinds of things. Um, you can just follow them as you're doing the tapping in this process. When we shift to the next aspect, we simply just keep on tapping and we allow you to focus on that aspect. And if there's a block, instead of having to do a setup statement to deal with the block, like they do in EFT, we just keep tapping and we focus on whatever, however we notice that there's a block and that just becomes the next problem to treat. Uh, we use continual tapping, as I mentioned. So if I'm working, you'll see this when I demonstrate the, the approach. And uh, you know, energy toning. I mentioned if you do tapping every day, if you want to, if you want to do that for yourself, once you know the basic tapping process, you can go away. And if you can, if you can get in an hour a day of tapping, um, you can tap in a focused way. You can tap for first aid, and you can also tap without having to be focused, just tapping on the points. And most people will report after doing that for a couple of weeks that their life is a whole lot better. We also use fingertip tapping using the thumb of the same hand. And I think this is the space where I might just take a break from the, um, from the slide presentation and just run through this for those of you who are brand new. Um, so basically you, you tap with two fingers of, this, of whatever hand is comfortable, your dominant hand probably. Um, and you tap at the start of the eyebrow is the first point that we like to use. 
Now you'll see there is a point on the top of the head and a lot of people use that. Now, I don't tend to teach that to people first. I start by using the, the eyebrow point. If you go to the middle and then towards one side, you can go on the left side or the right side and you don't have to tap on both sides, but if you like to, you can also tap on both sides at the same time, it won't hurt. And then once you've tapped several times on that point, as many times as you like, then you move to the next point, which is the side of the head, um, end of the eyebrow, side of the head, and so, or side of the eye, you know, level with the eye on the side of the head, underneath the eye and the top of the cheek, underneath the nose in the hollow in the midline, under the lip in the hollow in the midline, underneath the head of the collarbone, close into the center of the chest, under the arm, about middle of the bra band for ladies or level with the nipple on the side of the body. And then on the side of the thumb, level with the base of the thumbnail. So this is on the palm side of the thumb, level with the base of the thumbnail. And then on the side of the index finger, level with the nail and the side of the middle finger. And we also tap on the side of the ring finger and the side of the little finger, and then on the side of the hand. And then on the top of the head, and there's another point you can also tap on the side of the, uh, uh, on the wrist. Um, it's technically it's two and a half finger widths from the main crease, but if you just tap on the, on the wrist, kind of where the, um, where your watch would be or is, um, or on the other hand, if you prefer, or not, prefer not tapping on your watch, um, and then on the outside of the wrist as well. Okay, you can tap on each side. And then take a nice deep breath. And most people just from that process of doing tapping will start to feel a little bit more relaxed, just like I am just from doing that little bit of tapping. Now, when you're tapping, you can tap hard enough to feel it, but not hard enough to hurt. You can tap as many times as you like on every point. It doesn't matter if you do it a little bit obsessively, if you're a little bit of, if you have a bit of an anxiety problem and you, you, know, you feel like you need to count to 10 on every point, fine, that's okay. Progressively, we hope that you, um, you ultimately loosen up and, and get freedom from that anxiety from doing the tapping. And you start to notice that certain points feel better to tap on, certain points, certain points might even stir up your feelings a little bit and then other points will bring the feelings down. And if you just start to learn to pay attention to your body and tune into your body reactions, rather than just getting into some technical idea or following some thought that tells you about how you have to do it or how you're not gonna do it right, which is all anxiety driven stuff, um, then just doing the tapping and getting a lot of it can really, really help you, okay? So that's, the, that's, that's just the real basics. And I know for some of you, you're gonna to need to, um, to have more information than that. But what I'm doing, what I'm going to do for the um, the time that we have, most of it, once I've uh, shown you, um, given you the basic information about the intention part of intention tapping, is to demonstrate the approach for the rest of the time, and then just take all of your questions. So I mentioned the acceptance tapping. This is also a way of, uh, you know, uh, another way we use this is basically by grafting the tapping process that I just showed you to the pattern and the behavior or the feeling reactions of that problem. In other words, you just notice whatever's happening with that and you apply the tapping to it. Um, you can just let your mind wander freely around the issues and you can just, just tap while your mind is free associating. You can focus in on body feelings uh, or the mind, a little typo there on the screen if you, um, just to check if you're awake and alert. Um, so you can notice the body feelings or the thoughts and memories and ideas that are coming up into your mind. And you can basically allow them all to be there and add tapping to them. And then we like to graph the tapping to where the problem occurs. <clears throat> now, that won't necessarily be possible to do or easy to do for some of you if the problem occurs in public. So I mentioned the finger tapping and the fact that we use the finger points, and this is where the finger points come into their own. So I showed you that you can tap on the finger points and the side of the thumb using the, the other hand, and you can tap on them like this. Well, you can also tap on them like this, letting the thumb tap on the side of each finger point. So I'm tapping on the side of the index finger. In fact, I'm <laughs> just naturally doing it with both, but you can do it with one or both, it's up to you. 
and I'm tapping on the side of the middle finger and let the thumb be the tapper. So some people just get, get a little bit confused about this. Let the thumb tap down on the side of the finger and then move down to the next finger and then move down to the next finger and then move down to the next finger. And then if you like, you can go straight back up and start again, or you can just climb back up the, the points as David likes to say, up the ladder and down the ladder. And then once you get there, you can also, if you want, you can wrap around your index finger or your middle finger, and then you'll be tapping on the side of the thumb point as well. And this is discreet, it's portable. It's something that I could be doing. I'm doing it right now and you wouldn't know that I was doing that. But if I had some anxiety, I could be tapping under the table and uh, soothing myself at the same time. We've, I've taught this to CEOs, I've taught it to um, a, you know, athletes who've uh, you know, performed internationally, well, performers and athletes, um, gold medal winners who've been doing it behind the bleachers or, uh, or even discreetly on the court. Um, just tapping on these points to release the anxiety and restore the body's energy to flow. All righty. So um, it's always a, you know, how quickly can I get through this, this stuff so that we can get to the, to the fun bits of doing it. So intention tapping is a process I discovered. Um, the process I discovered was about using intention. Uh, I believe those intentions act as instructions or commands to the unconscious mind, which is what does the work. And now I combine those intentions with tapping and I get the both, best of both worlds by combining two very effective techniques. We're also combining cognitive as well as somatic mind and body elements. And the process also incorporates some things that those of you who are therapists or know, know stuff about this will, uh, will know of as um, regular cognitive behavioral techniques such as exposure, imaginal exposure, mindfulness, relaxation training, breathing retraining. And typically this process results in rapid relief of all kinds of emotional issues and cognitive and behavioral and somatic and emotional shifts at the same time. This is something I discovered when I had a painful heel spur. Um, I was, <clears throat> at that time I was, uh, you know, I was just throwing every, every technique I knew at this to try and get relief from the pain and the frustration of having the pain, which had also connected out to all the problems that I was having in my life and my business. So I was using tapping, using SET. I was using um, uh, an approach called TRE, trauma release exercises. Um, I was using an approach called logosynthesis uh, created by a, a a gentleman named uh, Willem Lammers from, uh, from Switzerland, which is a fantastic technique. I was working through uh, a, a process called the unstuck process by my uh, marketing coach at the time, Robert Middleton. And through that, I was led into looking again at Byron Katie's work, at, which she calls the work. And uh, when I went back to her book, this statement jumped out at me. The thought is basically harmless. It's not the thought, it's the attachment to our thoughts that causes us to suffer. And I realized in that moment, it's the emotional attachments. Now, I already knew this, that when you do tapping, you can have a thought. And when you think that thought, it can really upset you. And then when you do some tapping, you have the same thought after tapping and it doesn't upset you. The emotion has somehow become detached from the thought. And so there's something about this process of releasing attachments that is really crucial here. And in this moment of, um, of this statement just kind of jumping out at me, I, uh, I had the insight, what if we could use intention to do this rather than just tapping? So I formed the first of what has become a core intention in this process I now call intention tapping and which at the time I called intention-based energy process. And that, that um, intention was, I release all my emotional attachments to this problem. And as soon as I did that, I felt a massive shift, which was every bit as big as some of the biggest shifts I had had from using tapping, but it was instant. And then I, then I did it again, and I had another shift on the next part of the problem that I was focusing on. And then I did it again on another problem related to this and I had an instant shift again. 
And I realized that this, that this intention was being carried out on my behalf for me and through me. And uh, my problem was being released and it was absolutely gobsmacking, I have to say. <laughs> And uh, still surprises me what this can do. You know, I was working with a client that's today and, uh, you know, I still am just so pleasantly surprised how this works because I had tried so many different ways of using intention over the years. And this was the first time I had found this kind of result. And then I felt this um, tightness in my chest and I realized that, yeah, that's the body component because when I work with clients, I knew that there was a body energy disturbance. Now, this is part of what most people who use tapping understand is that when you have an upset emotion, there's something going on in the body. And for me, this was a chest tightness. And again, I, I realized that when you do tapping, you end up restoring the body energy to flow. And so that the problems no longer bother you when you're stuck in a stuck, you have stuck energy and stuck emotion, you have a stuck perspective and you've only got one way of seeing it. When things start to flow, then you've got lots of ways of seeing things and lots of ways of dealing with them. And uh, again, I had the insight, what if I could use intention? And I formed the simple intention, I restore the right energy flow to my chest. And just like now, <laughs> it works reliably to restore that energy flow and the process also clears up the breath and allows you to, um, you know, routinely allows people to, to take deep breaths. If you know tapping, you see people yawning when they're having a, a shift um, or moving through an issue, moving through an aspect, and you see that all the time with this process. So <clears throat> this basically, this, these first two statements that I mentioned became the core intention statements in, in IEP. And uh, I added a third one, I restore the right energy balance when I discovered that also through a pain that I was having and uh, in the middle of the night one, one night and, uh, and something, a memory came to me about an acupuncturist who talked about restoring the balance of, of energies. And so instead of using the restoring the energy flow, I used, I restore the right energy balance and instantly found a shift started trying it out with other issues, started trying all of this out with, um, you know, shared it with my friends and colleagues first, found that they got results and then started applying it with clients and trying it out with them. And they started getting results like I, like I basically couldn't believe. It's a bit like when I first learned tapping, I couldn't believe that something so simple could produce uh, results that were so profound. And so basically um, what you have on the screen there is the core of the process in terms of the statements that you use for um, releasing emotional attachments and restoring energy flow. I combine this with tapping, I call that intention tapping. Now, there are, uh, for anyone who's looked a little bit further into IEP and intention tapping, you'll know that there are a number of variations of this. There are some, um, some keys to learning how to apply this to get more effects, but I think you will be pleasantly surprised if you do nothing more than just take these statements away. So maybe take a screenshot right now or write this down. I will be sending out the recordings, so you will get this. But basically the three core intentions are these. I release all my emotional attachments to whatever the problem is. This problem, this event, this image, this belief, this thought, this memory, this person, this, uh, this situation, you know, whatever it is that's causing your problems, I release all my emotional attachments to that. And then if there's a disturbance in the body, I restore the right energy flow to this body area, wherever the disturbance is, and I restore the right energy balance to this body area, wherever the disturbance is. And then we basically apply this process. We apply it to any problem that you're experiencing right now, to anything from the past, which is still affecting you in the present, past traumas and past hurts, and any projection that your mind is making uh, about what's gonna happen in the future, which is your mind's unique capacity to come up with all this BS about how you're gonna suffer and you're gonna lose and you're gonna fail and you're gonna get sick or whatever it is that your mind is projecting, which is driving this massive anxiety 
And uh, this is one of the biggest things that I find myself working on right now. And that's why I want to offer this program to show you a little bit more about how to do that. When you do this, then you basically become more present in your life, which is here, right here, right now. And not in the past, stuck in the past, suffering that or stuck in a, in a future projection of a, of, a, of a world which will never actually be being anxious about that. Okay, so now would be a good time to get some questions. For those of you who are here live, again, thank you very much for being live. Um, uh, please feel, oh, <laughs> someone is saying, I can't see any chat notes. That's because I should have told you that if you want to type in the chat, change it to say all panelists and attendees. So it appears that everybody has been writing their chat notes to me. And uh, so I've, I've received all of your chat notes. <laughs> and uh, nobody else can see them. So, um, all right. Oh, and there's someone from, uh, who is that from Idaho? Who's saying we met at Gary Craig's workshop. Now you didn't say who you are, it just says from. So um, let me know who you are. That's so fantastic. That was in February, 1998 that we met Gary Craig. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have a question and uh, you want to type that in the chat, please, please do that now. Oh, Katie, okay. So um, yeah, that was a magic workshop. And uh, I have to say it all started from there for me with tapping because I, I you know, I was blown away by what tapping could do. I was also blown away because Gary Craig was so generous that he shared uh, the stage with all these other fantastic people like Tapas Fleming and uh, who created Tapas Acupressure Technique. Uh, Fred Gallo presented uh, on, not on the same weekend as us because there was two weekends, but he presented on the other weekend. We got the recording. Um, Larry Nims was there with us. We saw Marilyn Gordon. We met all of these incredible people. Um, and we got to see their techniques and integrate their techniques into uh, you know, what, we, what we did. So um, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, so I might go, um, I might actually just, oh, okay, so here we go. Okay, so Bridget says, you mentioned the yawning before, can you just explain what that actually means? Well, I've kind of reconfigured my beliefs about what yawns are because of course, most people think, oh, yawning just means you're bored or you are tired. Well, actually yawning is, uh, is, a, is an opening up and clearing and, a, and a, um, taking a nice deep breath. And uh, this, this happens routinely when you do tapping. So anyone who's done tapping will know that, you know, you're focusing on a problem you know, you're feeling some of the feelings of the problem. And then at some point you just go <sighs> either sigh or oh, yawn. And, you know, I would have seen this thousands and thousands and thousands of times now with clients. And also I've experienced it hundreds and hundreds of times myself. Just, um, just uh, and then after that, there's a, a shift in how you experience the problem. It occurs after the process of doing it, doing the yawning or sighing. For some people, they also feel a shift in their body. Some people, you know, get really physical with, with that. Um, there are other kinds of releases that people have. Um, I've experienced several clients and workshop participants who end up uh, uh, burping when they, when they have a release because there's a disturbance in the, in the stomach region and the, the, um, the tapping just helps that whole, you know, disturbance to settle down. Okay, so in the Q&A, um, Elizabeth is saying, I have a question about feeling fearful on waking, which I'm totally baffled by and would like to address. I oh, say so you are saying you want to be my volunteer, Elizabeth. I'm going to need to know, um, I want for the volunteer, for my uh, first volunteer, if I have top, trouble time for two, I will do that. But I, want, I need to know that you are new to this, or at least new to the way I do tapping. So um, I'm looking for a volunteer who's uh, new to this so that I can just explain the process. That will help others who are brand new to this as well, because uh, I'll have to go through some of the basics again. Um, Cheryl says, how long should one tap for each day? The answer is mostly as much as you want to get better. So, um, you know, generally, if you're feeling anxious a lot of the time, 
then I would be doing the tapping a lot of the time. Now, you're not going to be walking around in public tapping on these points, assuming you can get out in public at the moment anyway. So if there's one thing you can do in lockdown is you can do a lot of tapping on your, on your problems. And a lot of people in lockdown are having all kinds of problems, anxiety about what might happen or anger about you know, what's been imposed or, or whatever it is, sadness about not being able to connect, whatever's coming up for you, you can do a lot of tapping on. Now, it is possible to do too much tapping. If it's stopping you from taking action, uh, then, you know, then stop and take, take action and tap as you go. But uh, you know what, for now, if, you, if you're experiencing problems and you can just keep tapping until you feel better. Um, but if you do up to an hour a day, we like to suggest that, you know, you can do five minutes here, you can do 10 minutes there. When I go out for a walk, I get 20 minutes tapping because I tap on the finger points while I'm walking. And I just, you know, sometimes I'm just thinking through what I'm concerned about or what I have to do. And uh, I'm also using the intention tapping statements as well. Okay. Um, Sue Allen says, if a session results in a desired change, but then three days later, I'm back to pre-change state, do I just do it again? The answer is yes. And the reason why that's happening is because um, either there's lots of aspects to your problem or you have got a set point, okay? So your anxiety, for example, might be this higher level and your good life energy might be kind of underwater. And then, um, you know, you, get, you do some tapping and you get the anxiety down and you get the life energy coming up and you feel really good but you know what? Then you stop doing it or you do it less and then the anxiety creeps up again. It was only when I discovered the, the power of doing the regular daily tapping that I was able to get significant ongoing lasting shifts in a whole bunch of my issues. And now I, I just see it as like an emotional fitness. So every now and then I've just got to, I've just got to ramp up the tapping again just to, because I, even I can get out of whack in terms of, you know, out of balance with issues and stuff. It's kind of like you don't stop going, you know, doing your exercise. You don't stop eating well. Yeah, you do that for too long and then you get out of balance. So you've got to come back into balance. And so it's an ongoing process. Yes, it is true that you can uh, use tapping and you can focus on an issue. And that problem, like David's public speaking fear, none of those things that he treated with Gary Craig came back. He did end up having to discover a couple of other aspects of his problem that needed to be treated. So sometimes the problem comes back because you haven't treated all the aspects. There are lots of aspects. So there might be, um, you know, might be a number of events connected to this issue. There might be different feelings connected to this issue. There might be different parts of the body or the energy system connected to this issue. And you might have cleared some of it, but you might just not have cleared all of it. So sometimes it's just a matter of going uh, and, and working through more aspects. And sometimes it's just a matter of doing enough ongoing regular tapping to get your energy into a good place. All right, so let's, uh, let's now look for, um, oh, someone says I recommend patients to do an artificial yawn and then others keep coming. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I like them to come as part of the process because I want to know that the process itself is actually working. Um, says great release physically and emotionally and great for jaw and neck release too. Okay, so Bridget says, a new to intentional tapping, so offers to be a volunteer. Okay, Bridget, let's get you online. So what I need to do is to find you in the attendees, and I'm going to promote you to panelist, which means that you will now have the option to switch on your camera, make sure your microphone is unmuted, and then we can do a little bit of intention tapping. And I'm gonna ask everyone else, to follow along because what we've discovered, well, we learned from Gary Craig is that when you tap along, when someone else is doing this process, you can actually get a benefit from, from doing that. So I see you've come on the screen, but we need your camera on. Um, I believe you should be able to switch that on. Uh, on uh, most PCs, the start video, is um, a little icon down on the left-hand corner. Um, and also I need to ask you to unmute so that you can be heard. So if you can manage... Mm -hmm. Aha, hello. <laughs> hello, can you see me? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Um, what, what kind of device are you using? A PC. 
Okay, PC should be. Can you see me now? Uh, no, not yet. You may have. Um, you don't have a cover over your um, camera, do you? Or um... no? Oh, just hang on. There might be actually one. Okay. So, just while um, while we're getting organised, if there's someone else who has a quick question, feel free to type that in the chat. Just while Bridget is getting. Uh, uh, finding out what is happening. So um, Cheryl says, what about sore points? Should one keep rubbing or tapping there? Um, so it depends what you mean by sore points. In EFT, we used to rub a sore spot on the upper chest. Um, and uh, that was really helpful as a way of setting up the EFT process. If you mean that kind of a sore spot, which is uh, part of this whole network of connected points on the body that are part of this program she says yes um, in that case sure you can rub there or you can tap there no problem um, and that's all good in fact there are points all over the body and you can stimulate the points this is why you can tap uh, and not quite tap on the actual point and still get results but the most of the research that looks at um, what they call sham points which are not acupressure points versus actual acupressure points says that tapping on the actual pressure points produces a much more profound effect than tapping on other parts of the body. Um, Rachel says, how do you find what all the aspects are? This is a good question. In IEP, it's, um, it's easier than in using EFT, in my experience. In EFT, quite often you have to actually ask some questions like, where did you learn this? Or, you know, where do you, what are your, you know, what are your memories about this to, to identify specific events? Whereas with, um, with the intention tapping, you just follow the energy and uh, you also just wait and notice what's going on and the unconscious delivers the next aspect. All of which I'm gonna show you in a moment, hopefully when we get this session happening. So Bridget, what is happening with that microphone? I mean, with that, with that video? You were unmuting yourself and then you ended up muted again, so. Can we get it happening? Sorry, I could see myself, but it's gone again. Yeah, but we can't see you. So that, um, can I suggest you, um, yeah, we'll give you another minute or so, but otherwise we'll have to actually um, take a rain check or get you to go back out and come back in or something like that. Um, yeah, sorry, kind of, I don't seem to be able to, I can see myself now, but I, yeah. So share normally, screen doesn't do it either. No, not share, don't share screen. No. <laughs> no. This is the video icon down the left hand side, and it's it has the word stop video. And if you click on the um, the image there, you can stop or start your video. And at the and at the moment, it probably has a uh, red. No, it only says start video. So if you can click on start video, I got start video. Yep. Yeah, let's try that. And for everybody who's here, of course, if you're, um, you are probably familiar with the challenges of dealing with technology that we always encounter. So um, you can start by practicing the first intention statement. I release all my emotional attachments to technology or I release all my emotional attachments to waiting or whatever it is um, that's happening. So I'm afraid it looks like we're not going to be able to get this happening. So I'm sorry, unless you can have another go on that, um, clicking on that video icon. Normally there's a little hat kind of bit next to it. And usually you can select a camera. So if you have two different cameras, you might want to try uh, clicking on that little uh, hat icon um, and choosing a camera to switch to. Is that something that you can do? Yeah, I'm using a different computer and whatever it doesn't seem to work um, okay well just just, um, we're just sorry no no that's that's life anyway um of course you'll be able to tap along when we work with someone else so whatever frustrations are in your system about that they uh should still get help from from that process so um if it's okay i'm going to open up for someone else and then uh we'll catch you i'm sure in some way, shape or form. And uh, if we get time, we'll come back to you and try again. Um, but I'm just going to send you back to the group for now. And let's see if we have another um, 
another volunteer. So we're going to be looking for uh, someone else to come forward who wants to volunteer to work on an issue. Of course, you have to be prepared to be recorded as part of that process um, because that's that's a prerequisite for, for volunteering. Um, I always say if you have a fear of volunteering, we can treat that too. So um, feel free to, uh, you know, to come forward if you have an anxiety issue about performing or being seen or something like that. This is a very common issue. One of the ones I love to work with uh, is any kind of fear of performance, fear of, uh, you know, which also translates into business because people have fear of self-promotion and fear of putting themselves out there or fear of uh, criticism, those kinds of things. They're always, um, they're always good. Um, someone said, by the way, that sometimes the camera is directed to the back and needs to be redirect, redirected to the front. I'm not sure that would be the case because it was a PC camera. So um, anyway, stay la vie. Um, so Amy or Amy, that looks good. You're ready to volunteer. So let's bring you forward. Okay. Now let's see if we can get a working camera and microphone. So I'm promoting you to panelists. That means that you should be able to come online get the so far starting to happen, that's good. Um, okay. All right, so of course, nobody has any of the normal video things. So people are making statements about, I don't have the normal video things. You don't have any of those unless I promote you to panelist, which is what I've uh, just done with Amy. So we have your sound. Now let's see if we can get your video, <laughs> Amy. Um, let me just. Um, well, Steve, every time I click on the icon, so currently the video icon has got a slash through it. When I click on that to unslash it, it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Is that right? Well, I'm going to do something yeah. even. I'm, I'm sorry. It might be um, uh, might be some setting that's that's lies undiscovered in my system that I put there sometimes. So. I'm going to take a risk here and make you co-host, which should get rid of that problem. And I, I apologize um, if that was the issue with our previous um, situation as well. So you shouldn't have any problem now, I would think, with changing, with putting your video on. Ah, OK. okay. <laughs> now I feel like it may have been my fault, so I apologize. Um, to everybody for if that's the case and I'll discover what that setting is and it'll be changed for the future. But anyway, so Amy, uh, is that how you say your name? Amy, yes, it's not Amy, it's Amy. Oh, Amy, yeah, yeah I, I saw the double M, so I was yeah. taking a guess that was more Amy than, than Amy. Um, so what we want is an issue or challenge to work on and you are new to the intention tapping? Um, so I, I am quite, up, um, yes or no, I, I used to be a kinesiologist, so I'm familiar with all the points and, um, yeah, but that's fine. I've never, that's fine. I've never done this before. That's okay. But you haven't done intention tapping with me, right? No, no, I haven't. Okay. So, um, that means that you know the points, right? Um, sort of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, let's just follow. So. Just start tapping here, and we can do this while we're, while we're doing this. We can talk about the issues and challenges and problems, right? So we're just kind of right. combine both things. So just follow me to start with, and once you once you know the points, so once you even know most of them, you can just do the tapping in any order on any points, and you can tap for as long as you like on any of the points. So once you've done, once you've gone through a few times and learnt them, you don't need to follow me necessarily, okay? Um, so while we're doing this, let's find a problem to focus on. What problem would you like to try and apply this to? Um, let me do it for this one. My 18 year old son has gone back to school today. Um, he's in his final year of school. And I watched a, a webinar last night um, there's a bit of ADB in, in my family. My husband has ADB, my daughter has ADB. 
And I do think that my son has ADD or certain aspects of it. And um, although I've spoken to the psychologists and that at, at school, they all say they're not seeing signs of the ADD. But anyway, last night I was watching a, um, a webinar and it was talking about executive function and um, slow processing for language, which he does have a little bit. And he was saying the one subject that he's really not looking forward to doing is English. And I suddenly realized, oh, wow, well, that's language issues. So I haven't discussed this with him. I haven't discussed it with my husband. But I am concerned about my son. OK. So let's just bottle this all up as concern yeah. about your son, right? Right. And of course, you're doing what a lot of people do, that they're wanting to give me the exact, all the pieces of this, right? Yeah. The good news is we don't, even you and I don't need to know all the parts and pieces of this because we are putting this into the care of your unconscious mind. Right. Okay? And we're going to be doing the tapping process at the same time, which is going to be helping the body energy to process and for your emotions to flow and process. Because I believe emotions are meant to move us and move through us and they process through the body. And as they move through the body, we are moved by them and we're meant to be moved by life. We're not meant to get rid of our emotions. We're meant to actually uh, experience life when it flows through us unimpeded and we don't resist it then we can be moved by life but we don't get destroyed by it okay so um the tapping will be doing that just in the background and sometimes in the foreground and uh for everyone who's doing eft they're going to be thinking you can't do this you're not allowed to do global issues well i'm going to show you that with intention tapping you can because the aspects will be delivered by your unconscious not by your conscious mind so just right. tap and just say this, uh, just for the sake of the group, if you think about your son's issues, how much does it stir you up? Cool. It, it depends. Anything from about a five to an eight. Okay. <laughs> All right. And right now, as you think about him and his issues, how stirred up? Um, probably about seven or eight. Okay. So now just tap. Yeah, follow me if you like, and just say this, just say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To my son. To my son. And all of his issues and problems. And all of his issues and problems. And now I just want you to let it go. Now, did you see yeah. what just happened just then, straight away? Yeah. <laughs> it was a breath. It wasn't a full breath because it kind of got stuck but you started to do a, 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 a big breath, right? Right. And now we just keep tapping and notice what's happening now. I do feel calmer. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm more about a five now. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so by the way, the numbers is an EFT thing as well. And, you know, I mean, they, the numbers are not just exclusive to EFT. A lot of people like to use numbers. I prefer to find out what's going on for you rather than making it into a number, okay? okay. So I prefer you to just, instead of making up a number, which you have to kind of go, well, you know, this is a five. But you know what? You could be saying five and it could be a totally different feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I want to know what you notice. This thing that you're saying is a five. Is it a feeling somewhere in your body? If so, where is it? What type of feeling is it? What's it doing? I think I do feel a bit um, stressful here. Yep. Um, okay. Kind of. Is that center of the chest, solar plexus, or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So now just keep tapping. Mm. And just say, I restore the right energy flow. I restore the right energy flow. To my, to the, well, just say to the center of my chest. 
to the center of my chest. And now just let it do whatever it does. Mm, I'm not trying. And just notice what happens. It's getting a little confused because right then it, it actually came up as kind of feeling more stressful. Yes, so that can stomach. happen. Yes, that's yeah. that's actually it might not feel good, but it actually is good. It means the feeling underneath that feeling is coming up to process. Okay. So now just just say this, and it might seem strange, but I'm going to use the I release all my emotional attachments to that feeling because you you yeah. you're upset about that feeling, so you have some emotional attachments about it. So just say okay. I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To, to feeling this feeling. Stress, stress feeling. Yeah. And just keep tapping. And you can be tapping on the hand points, or you can mm. tap on the face points, or you can tap on the body points. And as you keep tapping, just notice what's happening with that feeling, or the thoughts about that feeling, or just notice whatever you notice. Space, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Um, just feeling it more stressful here. Yep. Um, feel like I'm on the verge of tears. Uh huh. Now just say this. Just say I restore the right energy flow. I restore the right energy flow to this feeling. To this feeling. And to these tears. And to these tears. Right. And then just let them do whatever they do. Mm. And just notice. I have a lot of guilt around this. Yes. Okay, so the underlying the underlying guilt, which is pretty typical for a mum is uh, is often the strongest aspect. So just say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To guilt. To guilt. And all the ways that I'm wrong. And all the ways that I'm wrong. Here it goes again. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice that breath, you'll notice that it kind of goes down to here and then it stops, right? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's not like a full deep breath. It kind of stops. It only goes part way down. And that's because okay. when you have a disturbance in energy, it feels like it's a real physical barrier. So you can only breathe up to it and it's hard to breathe through it. Okay. So I want you to say this. Just say, I restore the right energy flow. I restore the right energy flow to my chest, to my chest, and my diaphragm, and my diaphragm, and my stomach, and my stomach, and then just let it do what it does. Yeah, brilliant. And notice what happens. Now I'm feeling performance anxiety. Ah, so <laughs> <should be> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's 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 good. That's just another underlying aspect. So just say yeah. I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To how I should be performing. To how I should be performing. And if everybody's watching, then you'd be noticing shifts in the breathing. And you would, if you're noticing them and feeling them, you'll be noticing what's happening for you. And just, just notice it and let it keep doing it until you feel like it's reached a point where you can say, well, now it's kind of like this.
and then just when you're ready, um, let us know what you're noticing. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm still feeling a fear. Um, I'm feeling it's definitely something that I can take away and work on. Sorry, I'm not quite hearing you. Say that again. Um, I'm, I'm still feeling a little, a little tension here. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to go away and do it myself. You no, know? No, no, so, no, no, no. Well, not unless you want to. I mean, if you want to, that's okay. No, I, I just, I just <laughs> that's don't okay. Want to, yeah, yeah, it's all right. But that's like. You know, I don't want to hold you up, but I've got a lot yeah. more problems here, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To this problem in my chest. To this problem in my chest. And everything it means. And everything it means. Hmm. And just say I restore the right energy flow to my heart. I restore the right energy flow to my heart. What's that? It feels big. Yeah. It feels big, very big. Yeah, 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 yeah. So meaning your heart feels big or the problem feels big? Um, just that thought and the solution and the letting it in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, you're responsible for this, right? Mm. Now, that's just me being provocative to, to, you know, because you said that, you know, you had guilt, right? So that just means that you're responsible for everything, right? Right. Of course, he's 18 now. And your, you know, your influence is probably not quite what it used to be. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To I'm fully responsible for all of this. To I'm fully responsible for all of this. Mm. And I have to fix it. And I have to fix it. That feels like a weight off my shoulders. Yes, that's one of them. And there, there, you could you could do with letting go of a few more ultimately. But that's yeah. that's kind of a beginning, yeah? Yeah. So you, you notice, by the way, if everybody is watching, you can see the, that breath again that Amy did. And this time it's kind of, it's, it's still not going all fully. You know, I wouldn't imagine you'd take a really big deep breath but it feels like it's kind of right down to the diaphragm now when I, when I watch and, and so on. It's not kind of just going partly down or down one side or whatever. Just do this for me, take a deep breath. And just notice that. Okay, and just finally say, I'll restore the right energy flow. Restore the right energy flow. To my breath. To my breath. I would say if you keep breathing, you might live. <laughs> and if you live, you never know, you might actually be able to do something about the problem. <laughs> right, thank you. But not unless you live. So thank you, Amy, and I know that everybody will say a big thank you. And obviously we can't see everyone, but a big round of applause to our volunteer. And uh, I'll just uh, uh, send you back. Thank you so much for coming and joining us and for volunteering. And please go away and continue doing the tapping because this will continue to process over the next little while. Thank you um, for the comments that I'm seeing from people in the chat here. Uh, obviously, if you're getting the recording, you won't be um, won't be reading the chat. Um, uh, so thanks for the lovely comments about my work and the humour, um, and also for Amy about that um, about what happened and noticing that 
beautiful smile which started to emerge there. Um, that's really great. Um, Cheryl says, thank you, that was brilliant. I was yawning my head off. For those who are new to tapping, if you tap along while someone else is working, you borrow benefits and you also get relief on, uh, on your own problems and issues. So now if you have any quick questions about the process that I have been using here, um, and while those questions are coming up, I just wanna go back to my screen and take you back to, um, to the basic process and the basic um, intention statements. Now, I am combining the intention statements with tapping. So if you're new to tapping, then you also wanna get hold of the tapping diagram and learn the tapping points. And you can get a lot of free information on our website. Uh, we have a couple of different websites. I'll give you these at the end, but I'll mention them again now, intentiontapping.com, intentiontapping.com and eftdownunder.com. Um, both of those websites have diagrams of the tapping points and, and uh, outlines of the basic processes and links to videos that you can watch about how this happens. You can also find this on YouTube under my YouTube channel. Um, so the basic intention statements that I keep going back to time and time again, I release all my emotional attachments to this problem. I restore the right energy flow to this body area, wherever the disturbance is and I restore the right energy balance to this body area, wherever the disturbance is. Now, if you, um, if you do that and you just keep applying those basic statements to whatever problem there is, and then even if it gets worse, now apply it to that. And if it gets worse, apply it to that. And if you get stuck because the problem's too big or the issues are too painful, go and get help and work with someone who's a practitioner. We, we have practitioners coming online for intention tapping. We expect to be able to, um, to have, share all those details with you within the next couple of weeks because we have people who are, are just certifying in this process right now. And uh, we should have a, um, a list of our first uh, uh, intention tapping practitioners very, very soon. Maybe by the time some of you are watching this on the recording. Um, just want to mention something before we uh, go to your questions and before we uh, leave this about anxiety because I mentioned anxiety and this is the biggest issue we have at the moment in the world is anxiety. It's not fear, it's anxiety that's the problem. Fear is a life-saving thing that happens to um, when you have a real threat to help you to survive it. Anxiety comes up when you either you have a you've learned from a, a past experience where you had, uh, you linked a threat to certain situations. Now your mind uh, gives you a shot of anxiety when you're going into a situation like that, or, or if there's a trigger that reminds you of something about that. This just tells you that you need to do some more work to, to release that past experience, release the attachments that it's causing you, that are causing you to feel anxious in the present. And your mind can also project negative scenarios and doom and gloom situations in the future to make you stressed right now. Because your brain can't really tell a difference between something you vividly imagine and something you're actually experiencing. So that you can imagine something that isn't happening right now as if it's happening and feel some of the same feelings as if it were actually happening, but it's not real. And uh, the reason why that, that happens is because you can, you can think of it so vividly that you can attach to, to it and start to believe it. And in this process, we're releasing those attachments to what you're imagining and uh, restoring the energy flow to the disturbances that happen in the body. Because most of our troubles really never happen. Most of them are just mind-created troubles that we start to believe or attach to. And I just wanna give you a quick thing for those who are brand new again, that you can release your emotional attachments to these projections that your mind is making and to the fantasies that your mind is creating about how you're gonna fail or this bad thing or that bad thing is gonna to happen to you when it won't necessarily happen. And uh, you know, it's, it's not that you shouldn't be able to think about worst case scenarios. You shouldn't have to feel them as if they're happening right now because they're not happening right now. It's certainly helpful to be able to consider what might happen and to be able to plan for it but you don't have to have the emotional attachment to it. So you can release the emotional attachments to the projection just by simply framing the projection. I release all my emotional attachments to this projection that this is gonna happen or that's gonna happen or I'm gonna fail. I release all my emotional attachments to the fantasy that I'm gonna end up suffering in this way. And the one that's happening all over the world is the, is the belief that you're gonna get sick and you're gonna suffer and you're gonna die in a certain way or your loved ones are gonna do that. 
Now, I'm not denying realities here. I'm, I'm denying the reality of a projected mind created fantasy that causes you to suffer something before it's happened. Because, um, you know, being able to plan and adapt and work out how to deal with a situation is helpful, but suffering it as if it were happening to you right now doesn't help you at all. It just makes you feel sick emotionally. So release those emotional attachments to the unreal projections and to the fantasies that your mind is creating. And then you'll only have to deal with what happens when it happens. I also want to quickly mention a lot of this demo that I just did was all about shoulds. And so one of the best things you can apply this process to you is, is anything that you believe that you should be doing or that you shouldn't have done or that you should not do or that you should not have done in the past or that you, you know, what should be happening in the future, what the government should be doing that they're not doing. Release your emotional attachments to that stuff and you can free up a whole lot of energy. Now, um, I'm going to give you this now because we're going to run out of time and I want to make sure that I give you, um, for those of you who need it, more ways of following up on this for those who want to get more information. On intentiontapping.com, this is a new website. It doesn't have a lot of stuff on there right now, but there are some videos. There's also links to some training. So if you want to learn about intention tapping in more depth, we actually have a couple of workshops coming up very soon. You can find them on the um, events and training page at intentiontapping.com. You can also find more about my work on my YouTube channel, Wells Down Under. And you can also find it on the eftdownunder.com website, particularly on the blog and particularly on the training page if you want to find out about training that's coming up and you want to access some of the most re recent stuff that I've written or some of the most recent uh, uh, programs that I have conducted for free. All right, well, let's come back now for, um, for my questions and comments and free associations. Um, one question is, do you do private sessions? Yes, I do have a, um, a coaching program. Um, usually do a block of six sessions coaching. If you're interested in that, you can write to me um, uh, through, you can go through those websites and go to the contact page, or you can send an email to us at admin at eftdownunder.com. Um, the recording is a question about the recording. Yes, the recording is going to be emailed out um, and it'll also be available on YouTube. Um, there's a question about uh, tapping both sides at once. Does that increase the benefits? Um, I've never seen a significant difference in results from tapping on one side versus tapping on the other side versus tapping on both sides. But if you feel better doing it one way or the other way, then you do that. If you feel better tapping on one side and then tapping on the other side, you can do that and you can get results. If you like to tap on both sides at the same time, like this, go for it and uh, work out what works for you um, and how that, how that works for you. Um, question is, how would you relate these statements if you want to relate it to a weight problem? This is a massive area. Um, we actually did do some research on, on SET and EFT and CBT for um, food cravings. And um, one of the biggest issues that I would work to is the non-self acceptance. So that when you, uh, when you have a problem with weight, you have a problem with your non-acceptance of yourself, whether it's not accepting your body, whether it's not accepting yourself because you, you've learned that you you know, you have beliefs about you're not disciplined or you're, you're lazy or, or whatever beliefs you have. Or when you indulge or when you have a binge and you feel like you're a bad person, that guilt and that process of self-recrimination and self-blame and all the shoulds, that just reinforces the addictive process that, 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 um, that creates these issues. Plus, there are... Um, there are issues with your own concepts of what your weight should be. And so there are people who have irrational ideas about what weight should be based on societal definitions or family issues or cultural issues or whatever that is. And so you need to start by releasing your attachments to that stuff so you can work at how you want to be rather than how the world says you have to be in any particular issue. So it's a massive uh, a whole lot of uh, different aspects with that. And of course you need to, in working with any issue, you wanna deal with how it affects you. So you know what I would do? I would say, if you just said my weight issue, I would start with that and say, I release all my emotional attachments 
to my weight issue or my issues with weight. And then I would just start tapping and just allow the process to reveal what's the next aspect to work with. And this is what we do in intention tapping. We don't have to know all the answers because the unconscious is gonna do this for us. And then the unconscious will give us the next aspect to work on. And then when that comes up, you just notice it. And now if it's a problem or a problem thought or an image or a memory, now you can say, I release all my emotional attachment to this memory or this, this thought or this belief. And now it's a body feeling and you can just say, well, I restore the right energy flow and balance to this area. And then you let it just do what it does and notice what comes next. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> whoever that is saying i love the simplicity of the process and the profound shifts a great strategy for today's challenges thank you steve thank you everybody um i will i will try and uh, pick up a couple more i know we've actually run out of time but um sue allen says do i always have to use multiple points or can i use a single point you can use a single point if you prefer but in general with using tapping we have found that generally you get better results if you're using at least three or four or five points as part of the tapping process that you use. But if you find that one particular point feels really good for you to use, you can use that, that point and you can use it more consistently. Alrighty, well, um, like I said, we are gonna run out of time. So let me just come back to this um, uh, slides. I mentioned that there are some uh, workshops coming up. We have got an, uh, a certification process for intention tapping that's just been created. We have our first lot of practitioners coming through. We're looking for people who want to learn this, who want to, um, to help others, but also you can come along to a level one workshop and you can learn the process for yourself, for helping yourself, and you'll learn the basics if you want to, to pass it on to others. And then if you've done that level one training and you've done some basic uh, stuff with it and you've tried it out, uh, on yourself and, and, and uh, maybe share it a little bit, then you might wanna to come to a level two training where we do the practitioner essentials training for those who want to use it with clients. Some of you will then wanna to, want to also go on and become certified as intention tapping practitioners. And I would love to hear from you if that's the case. Um, and also if you wanna use it for yourself, like feel free to join one of the level one workshops. And every now and then I'll also be putting on short courses and programs focused on specific issues. So if you have something to feedback, just send us a, a link or, or go to the contact um, form on the, on the um, website, intentiontapping.com. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you, for, um, thank you to my uh, two volunteers. I apologize for that issue, um, Brigitte, with, with us not getting the video. I think that may have been an issue for me. Um, if you write to me, I'm going to send you something that maybe you can use to, uh, to follow along to learn some more about the process uh, and give you access to one of my programs as a way of saying, uh, apologising for that little error. And uh, yeah, I hope that you can use that and uh, get some good results from it. From it. Um, last quickly, Tamara says, it's just me or does the point on the upper cheeks hurt? If the point hurts, then that generally is a sign to me that that's a point that needs a little bit more careful handling, but also ultimately needs a little bit more stimulation. But I would just tap more gently on that point and uh, you might want to, um, and you might get some, uh, some good relief ultimately from doing that. But if it's too painful, then just tap on all the other points because the whole system is all connected and you'll get some, uh, some results from connecting them all up. So we way over time. So uh, once again, thanks everybody. Um, uh, for those of you who are here and wanna get the replay, I'll be coming out to you soon. For those of you who are watching this on the replay, thank you also for joining me. I hope you found that this helpful. Uh, give it a go. You're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Uh, I think that what this simple uh, intention statements and the process of tapping can do for you. And uh, if I have a chance to work with you sometime or to, um, to uh, see you in a program, eventually face to face again, that will be wonderful. But online, uh, that's great too. So thanks again and bye for now. So I'll just switch off the recording here.